Hello, my name is Patrick and I'm an aerospace engineer at Airbus. Like a lot of people right now, I'm currently working from home due to COVID-19, which is why I'm filming this from my home in Bristol. I'm going to give you my idea for project inspiration, but before I do, I want to tell you a little bit about Airbus and set the scene for the project that I have in mind for you. If you've heard of Airbus before, you'll probably know it as the manufacturer of airliners, like this one, the A350. And you've probably also heard of the giant of the skies, the A380, which is the largest passenger plane ever made, able to carry almost 870 passengers. What you might not know is that Airbus has two other divisions as well as the commercial aircraft one. Airbus Helicopters is the world's largest helicopter manufacturer, with about 12,000 flying in service today. And Airbus Defence and Space is the world's second largest space company, and makes satellites, interplanetary spacecraft, rockets and military aircraft, like the A400M. I work in the commercial aircraft division though, so this is going to be the theme of my project for you. Before I tell you exactly what it is, let me set the scene a little bit. So, most commercial aircraft flying today look pretty similar to those flying back in the 1950s. Basically a tube with wings and some engines hanging underneath them. This is the Boeing 707, which first flew in 1957, compared to the A350, which is considered today's state of the art, in 2020. Apart from the number of engines, they have very similar layouts, or configurations as we usually call them. There have been some slight variations on this over the years, but the majority look more or less the same and could be hard to tell apart. You might think this is just companies copying each other, but it's not, and there's actually a very good reason for this. It's a very efficient configuration for the propulsion type that's being used to get all of them off the ground. These are known as gas turbine engines, and they're powered by jet aviation fuel, which is very similar to the diesel that some of us put in our cars today. Although the aircraft might not have changed that much in appearance, when you look at their fuel efficiencies, it's clear to see that a lot of progress has been made in these 60 odd years. This graph shows quite nicely how the energy needed per passenger per kilometre has decreased by about 80% since the early days of jet travel. The majority of this improvement has come from the development of vastly improved engines, but there are also sizable contributions from other factors, such as weight reduction with composite materials like carbon fibre, which you've probably heard of, and aerodynamic improvements too, such as the addition of these little things on the end of the wings, that we call winglets. In the last decade, we've been made increasingly aware of the effects of climate change, to which aviation is a contributor, generating about 2% of global carbon dioxide emissions. To tackle this, the aviation industry has set ambitious targets for decarbonisation of air travel, and rightly so too. These include carbon neutral growth from 2020 onwards, and a 50% reduction in net carbon emissions by 2050 compared to 2005 levels. These represent an even greater challenge for the aerospace industry when you consider that they also need to account for the anticipated growth in air traffic, which is roughly doubling every 15 years, as flying is made more accessible to a greater proportion of the world's population. This graph shows the situation over the next 30 years quite nicely. If no action is taken and we continue to use today's state-of-the-art aircraft up to 2050, we'll miss the targets by a long way. But what it also shows is that even with improvements on known technologies, we still wouldn't meet either of them. It will take some radically new technologies, shown by the green area, to be able to achieve these targets and enable us to follow the path shown in green down to the 50% in 2050. So this brings me on to the project itself, which is, I'd like you to design a concept aircraft for the post-fossil fuel era. Imagine the year is 2040, and by now, everyone has a deep understanding of the impacts of greenhouse gas emissions on climate change. On top of strict regulations on carbon emissions, the cost of extracting the dwindling supplies of fossil fuels makes it just too expensive to be a viable option for use in aircraft anymore. We will no doubt have much more expansive train networks, but we'll still need the ability to fly somehow, 
whether it be to visit friends and family for work or pleasure, or to transport perishable freight such as fruit and flowers. So I'd like you to come up with a design for a concept aircraft that will fly passengers around in 2040. What technologies might we see on aircraft then? This might include new types of propulsion, new materials, new aerodynamic shapes, but you could also suggest things that would give a better overall passenger experience like new cabin designs and features. To start with, you should think about which type of energy source will power your aircraft and why. Does electric propulsion have potential? Or maybe biofuels or synthetic fuels will be the solution. There are several other possibilities too, but I'll let you do your own research here. You might also want to think about the air traffic market and what that might look like in the future. Will people travel as much as they used to? Might it even be impacted by the COVID-19 crisis, for example, if businesses opt to use conference calls over face-to-face -face meetings? And how big will these aircraft need to be as a result of this? I've left the project scope as broad as possible for you, so that you can be as creative as you like. Sketch your designs, make models if you want, and some of you might even have access to a 3D printer and be able to make something like this. But remember that this is an engineering exercise and not an art one, so make sure you justify all your design decisions with good reasoning and evidence. So, that's my project idea. The aim for the project is to help you achieve a silver crest award level, and your teachers will be able to provide more information about this. But you can take a look at the crest website too for more information. You could choose to work on your own or in small groups, and if you're working on your own, you might want to focus on one small aspect of the project in more detail. For example, look just at the propulsion type or the cabin design and technologies. Or you could tackle the whole lot if you want to. If you're working in a group, then I'd suggest you split the tasks up. So for example, someone can look at the energy sources and propulsion, one person can look at cabin technologies, another one looks at maybe the market research, etc. And make sure you communicate well between each other because no engineering task is going to be possible without good teamwork. I'll put a list of some useful resources in the description below and in the project guidance, but there will be plenty of other things you can find on the internet. These are just to get you started. So, that's all I wanted to say. I look forward to seeing up for the variety of designs that you can come up with. And remember, as with all engineering, there is no one right answer. I hope you'll enjoy it, and good luck. Hello, I'm Mr. Patrick Metcalf, and welcome to the premiere episode of Patrick Metcalf Presents Fun with Planes. I can't do that, can I?